really look over there, but it's so bright. It snowed last night, but like an inch. Um, actually, a bunch of it's melted because the sun's been out, but it did look like a winter wonderland last night and like a blizzard coming down. It was just swirling. And it's 19 currently outside, and it's close to 11 o'clock. So it is going to be a frigid day. Um, my husband's like, oh, I'll come load your stove. And I was like, well, the sun's out. Let's see what the temperature's going to be. So I looked on my app and I was like, it's already 80. And now um, it's 85. So the stove's going to turn off because it wasn't off yesterday because of the clouds. And I'm going to clean it out today. Um, I know this is crazy, but I think I'm going to have to open the window and turn the vent fan on. Or it's going to get pretty warm. And my fishies, they're hanging out, probably waiting on some food. And I'm gonna go ahead and water these today. Um, I didn't water them yesterday because they still look like they got plenty of moisture, but I'm gonna go ahead and give them a little bit. And I have some fish water over there that I'm gonna give them so they can have a little bit of fertilizer. I'm headed up to have a little breakfast. And then afterwards, I think what I'm gonna come down here and do is finish wrapping my posts. And then I have some plants, some begonias that need to be propagated. And I'm gonna propagate a couple of these. I'll show you guys how I do it and we'll see where the day goes after that. <laughs> All right, so it's time to propagate my nepenthes. Now, I've never done this before, but I've watched some videos and taken some advice from a neighbor which grows a ton of these in his greenhouse. So I'm gonna get a vine off here. One that's not brown, because that one's not gonna propagate properly. So we're gonna get one that's green, and we'll break it up with a couple leaves on each one. All right, so for my nepenthes, I'm gonna cut this down the stem and leave two or three leaves on each section. Try to cut above a leaf where the nodes are to give it room for growth. I'm gonna cut at like an angle, 45 degree angle. Make sure that you um, sterilize your scissors. You don't wanna introduce any type of disease, bacteria. Okay, so one, two, three, we'll cut right here. That one has a pitcher on it. I'll probably remove the pitchers and a lot of the leaves so um, the plant will be able to grow and it won't dry out. Now, like I said, I'm gonna remove these bottom leaves. Let me leave a little one there. And a little section. I'll try a few a different way, see what does better. I'll leave that top one on that one. Now this is what I grow my carnivorous plants in, sphagnum moss. It allows it to breathe, but still stay moist is what you want. Now eventually I'm gonna get some more pots for these. Um, I have some that my others are in that are just the woven basket kind and they allow for good air flow. I've also got some pottery ones that have holes in them. Um, you can find them out at different places and those also allow, allow for air flow. I'm gonna wet this down real good. All right, for propagation, you want to put this in here. You want to make a little hole. I have a little paintbrush in here I use for all kinds of things. And you want to stick that below the first, you want to stick that right above the first leaf. And I'm going to put several in here. Growing together. And I'm going to put these in a bright indirect lighting as with cuttings you don't want to give them too much direct sunlight at the beginning until they root and this may take a couple months for um 
for roots to begin. All right, so I'm gonna propagate this begonia. And this is one he gave me, but he also gave me a leaf to propagate. Very pretty. And I'm gonna do it in the sphagnum as well. And I have an egg carton here that I'm going to use. I don't know if this will work, but it seems like it'll work to me. So I'm gonna put it on this side and then I've got like a little dome here. Okay, so with this one, my neighbor said to cut it in three parts. on the sphagnum. Now he also said to get a razor blade and just slice little slices through the veins of the leaves. All right, so I'm gonna lightly cover this just so a little bit of moisture will stay in here and put it over here on my partial shade side and we'll keep an eye on it. My begonias are pretty happy down here. So this one is very happy down here too. I used to keep it on the other side of the greenhouse, but it dried up and burnt and was not happy there at all. So it's hiding down here in this little section. Well, I'm done propagating and my stomach's growling. I have been here for hours. I don't even know what time it is. So I think I need to go in and have some lunch. But before I do that, I'm gonna run down to the shop real quick and see what my husband's doing um, as far as the kitchen island goes because I haven't checked in a little while and and I'm curious to see what he's got done. We you doing? You're doing what? Building drawers. Building drawers. Did you figure out the hinges? Well, we're not to the hinge yet. We're not to oh. the doors. We're doing the drawers. But I have figured out these new style um, drawer slides that I'm using, which are super nice. And shouldn't really glue the panels because you want them to float. But I would like to. Put a little dab of glue on them because if not, sometimes these panels and they can become a little loose certain times of the year. Expansion, contraction, you know, be kind of noisy. So, Nobody wants noisy drawers. Like just, <laughs> no, well, it's not good to have a noisy drawer. Hey everybody, welcome back to this old greenhouse woodworking edition. So back on the island today, it's been very, very cold and um, snowy, uh, but we mustered up the energy to come down and work on the island again today. Not a whole lot's changed. Uh, been working a lot of doing extra things uh, over the past week, but we have got the drawers completely done and I'll flip it around here just a minute and show you. They've been kind of a process because I've put some new slides on uh, that I've never worked with before and they've been kind of finicky, but I think I figured them out. Uh, Seth Seth, and I've got it pretty much figured out how to, how to mount and everything. They look really good. Uh, let me flip this around here and show you how to do that. I don't know how to flip this around. Hold on. Okay, we're back. I figured, I don't know how to do this stuff, y'all. Uh, so here's the drawers. So they're soft closed drawers. 
see how if you push them back all the way they, they soft close it's really cold outside too so that's not really helping the soft close when you get them inside and they warm up they'll be a lot better but um, the hinges here i'm sorry the drawer slides they're all hidden they're all underneath so they work really well i fully recommend these uh, not a sponsor, but uh, the ones that I got are great. Uh, they work really well. And they fit really nice. And what's going to be here, there's going to be a door here that's going to hide these bank of drawers. So you're not actually going to see these drawers. That's why they are they don't have the, the outside face frame on them like you would normally see on a bank of drawers. But they're going to be hidden behind that big door. That's what the client wanted, so that's what they're getting. Um, and they work really good. They look really nice. They're actually turned out wider and deeper than I had anticipated, which was a, a plus. Here is going to be where their cooktop goes. And beside, underneath here, I've got holes drilled for some shelf pins. And I'm going to create a big shelf if they want to use it. I'm going to give them that as well. There'll be two doors that go one here and one here and they'll fold open toward the outside there'll also be another cabinet here um, she wanted a just an open cabinet with a shelf in here to store her pots pans large cooking items things of that nature there'll be a door here as well so that's pretty much the business end of the island uh, we're very, very pleased with with the drawers that turned out. We've got the face frame on. Of course, it's kind of rough right now. We've got some holes filled. So we've got to do a lot of sanding. Hopefully next week we'll get to work on the, the doors, uh, depending on my schedule, work schedule, and how things go. Uh, but otherwise, it's turned out pretty good. Very, very pleased. Of course, over here on these sides here, there'll be barn wood. Um, in the vertical position, they want it to be very rough. Um, I was able to get a new tool um, from a company that I saw online, and it's supposed to clean the barn wood up really, really good. We've tried it on a piece, and it's amazing at how well it works. So we're, we're pretty excited to be able to get that done. I'm going to hopefully try to do something a little different here on the ends to make it look a little bit more beefy, and it'll wrap around all barn wood around and then through and then on the back side over there on the other side and on top here there'll be a large piece of granite or some sort of natural stone quartz or something of that nature that's going to sit on top and then this back here will be where they, they you know there'll be some stools or some seating or something back here in the back so that's how that's shaping up uh, it's going to be really really nice and it's going to be really really heavy we're not certain how we're going to be able to get that into the house um, without a lot of people. So that'll probably be very interesting the day that that happens. So anyway, that's the progress this week. Pretty pleased. Uh, Seth did a good job as usual. Um, he's he's coming along well in his skills. Very pleased with, with uh, his ability. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll keep you updated. This old greenhouse, woodwork edition, signing out.